Okay, we've been joined by uh, Western Kentucky coach and student athletes. And Coach Lutz will ask you to make an opening comment, and then we'll go to questions for anyone up here at the dais. So, Coach? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously losing stinks. Um, these guys invested a lot of time and effort and energy. They invested their heart and soul in this. And, and uh, you know, it, it's no fun to lose this basketball game on a stage like this. But like I told them, um, there are no losers when you get to this point. Everybody that is in the NCAA tournament is good. They're special. They're a very good team. So you lost the basketball game, but hold your head up high and uh, know that you did something special. And uh, I, I meant it. These guys, are they've been great all year. And um, we just fell a little short today to a good Marquette team. Thanks, Coach. And questions, please raise your hand. Name and affiliation for the coach or the players right here in front. Go ahead. Zion Brown, Indianapolis star. Coach, uh, your season ends here, but you were able to win the conference tournament, get back to the tournament for the first time in over a decade, and then you're up at halftime against one of the best teams in the country. I guess just what do you take away from the way you guys have played the last two weeks and, and have come together? Oh, it just goes to show how hard it is to sustain, sustain things. You know, and I've always thought that uh, we have a good team, a team that could win the league and win the tournament and go to the NCAA tournament and win a game or two. Um, but it just goes to show how hard it is. I mean, these guys, when they're their best and they're playing their best and feeling their best, there's, they're, they're a good good basketball team. But, you know, the, the hard part is to sustain it for, you know, 30-plus games. And, uh, you know, luckily we got going at the right time um, and put ourselves in a position to get here today. Question right here in the back. Kaden Gaylor Day, WBKO. Tyrone, man, a career day for you. Um, what was going for you in that first half, and then what, what did Marquette do in the second half to kind of throw you off there? Question for Tyrone. Uh, the first half, um, I guess they were sagging off a little bit, so I had to show them that I can shoot the ball and, and I can drive, so I, I can make passes where I can get my teammates going. Uh, the second half, I guess they just denied me, but it really didn't slow me down. I was still trying to get my teammates going with shots like Don, you know, just trying to get them back in the game with me and stuff. Right over here. Jeff, Nations, Bowling Green Daily News. Um, Coach Lutz, uh, first half, obviously, you guys did a pretty good job against them on the three-point line. Second half, they started to connect. Um, was that something that they adjusted to, or, or what was going on that, that allowed them to be more successful? Well, I thought that uh, I thought our defense was better, you know, probably from the I don't know, the eight minute mark, nine minute mark on from the first half. I thought we, we defended better and uh, I'll have to watch the tape, but they obviously missed some shots, but we rebounded those shots and we were able to convert in transition. Um, in the second half, and during that time span, we didn't turn the ball over. Um, obviously to open up the second half, we turned the ball over too much and uh, we gave them some open looks where we just weren't connected enough defensively with our communication and those sorts of things. And uh, they got going and, and they're a good basketball team. When they get going, um, they're hard to stop. So give them credit, um, give their staff credit for whatever adjustments they made at halftime. But in reality, um, I, I just felt like defensively we, we weren't nearly as, as sound to start the second half. And I think we turned it over three of the first five possessions or four of the five, first five possessions in the second half. And you can't do that against a, a, a number two seed in the NCAA tournament. You just can't. Right here. Dave Reinhardt, WCBK Radio. To either one of the players, some coach uh, was talking about the second half, starting the second half. Let's go back to the end of the first half. 14-2 uh, run. Boy, shots were just dropping on both sides, but more for you guys. Just talk about the excitement and uh, how the game was flowing for leading into that seven-point lead at halftime. Don? Uh, um, yeah, it was, it was fun going on that run. We knew, like, uh, we – I noticed, like, we kind of – most of the time we, like, we finish halves pretty well. And like in the beginning, we kind of started off, we didn't make a lot of shots. So I knew it was going to come, like shots was going to fall. And it was good to see him going in and going to run, like taking us to the halftime break. Right here. Uh, Gary Graves, AP. For, for Don, um, what kind of things did you all see from, from Cam Jones maybe that didn't initially show up on the scouting report that, that kind of made the difference? 
I don't know. We we knew we knew what he like what he did well. He was a good player. It was just um, a lot of like in the rotations and like getting in rotations too much, and they're they're kicking it and getting the one more pass, and they had he got some pretty good looks and some uh, a few offensive rebounds got kicked back out and some things like that, and they had a lot of good, good fast break more opportunity like fast break points than we did. So I think he just had uh, some pretty good looks. I think we we knew he was a good player and what he was capable of. Over here, please. Addy Miners, w, WLKY at Louisville. Uh, Coach, you know, ha, this is a pretty good first season for you at Western Kentucky. How are you going into the off season and building off of this momentum going into next year? Oh, I mean, <laughs> that's a hard question to answer about 10 minutes after we just got our butts beat. Um, you know, I mean, these days you just have to figure out um, you know, what you have returning on your roster. We obviously have some guys that have graduated and co could turn pro, some guys that have another year of eligibility. So we've got to sit down with families and, and discuss, you know, a plan moving forward and see what they want to do. Obviously, we'll support them in, in whatever fashion um, that is best for them. But uh, once we figure out who's staying and who's going, um, then you get back to recruiting. And uh, you have to do it all over again. That's just the way this this uh, process works nowadays. And, uh, you know, we're going to enjoy it here for a little bit, but then we'll be back to reality here very shortly. Right here. Or Don, just what has this experience been like and how has this helped you going forward? Um, this experience just been real good. Like, just being getting more experiences in playing at this level, just having fun, I feel like it, it helped me get better, like build good relationships with my teammates and my coaches and stuff like that. And I think it helped me for sure in the long run to be the pro that I'm trying to be. Right back here. Tyrone, man, uh, you're one of the few returners from last year's team to this year's team with the new coaching regime. You know, can you just talk about how this, you know, year transition has been for you, you know, going from last year to this year and this team making the tournament for the first time in over a decade? Uh, it was uh, very hard to adjust uh, for a little bit coming from uh, Coach Stransberry to Coach Lutz because I was in the process of hitting the portal until me and Lutz had sat down and had a talk. And he told me, he's like, I'm going to make you a better player. And I believed in him, and he did. So I thank him for that. And I thank my teammates, too, because they kept me going. You know, some days that I wanted to give up, they, you know, had my back. And... I'm just like really grateful to be here. That's all I got to say. You know. Right here. Steve, just wanted to ask you too about uh, kind of the pacing of this game. Seemed to favor you guys, at least in the first half. Um, just looking at, at three pointers, I think you guys were 50% in the first half. Did you feel like you rushed them a little bit in the second half? No, I, I don't think that uh, we played good enough defense to, to transition into offense and get some easy ones. Um, I thought that Marquette was very sound defensively in the second half. They probably got into us a little bit more and, and were more aggressive. Um, and, and, you know, again, I'll watch the film, but I would, I would say just going off of the game, we had, uh, oh, shoot, we had 12 assists on 17 made baskets at halftime, and we finished the game with... Uh, 17 assists on 28 made baskets, right? That's the percentages, those numbers are skewed. So I don't think we probably shared the ball nearly as well as we did in the first half. And uh, again, just give, give Marquette credit because uh, you know they did a much better job defensively in the second half. Right here in front. Luke Edmonds, College Heights Herald. Um, I just have a question for you. Brandon looked to be playing less than his average amount of minutes, but he also had av like less than average amount of his statistics. W was that was that playing off one another, giving him less minutes because of his production, or was that a game plan coming in to give him? Well, I mean, you've covered you've covered us long enough to know that you know the guys that are playing well and playing hard are going to play, and, and it's not to say that Brandon um, didn't want to play well and didn't try, but for whatever reason, it probably wasn't his. Uh, his best outing. And uh, it's a shame because I feel bad for him, you know, coming back to Indianapolis in front of a lot of uh, friends and family and fans. Um, I wanted, you know, we all wanted him to do well. We needed him to probably do well to, to win. You know, we, 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 we were going to need all hands on deck to play well today to win this game. And uh, it, it stinks for him because he's worked really hard and he cares a lot. But the fact of the matter is, is my job is to help, uh, is to figure out a way to win the game and uh, play the guys that are going to help us win the game on that particular day. Now, with that being said, um, Brandon helped us get here in Huntsville and was a 
very good player for us all year long. So, um, like I say, it just wasn't his day, but that shouldn't that shouldn't diminish his career by any means. Got time for a couple more right here. Caden Gaylord Day, WBKO coach. Uh, just going back to two years before this, I mean, you came from Texas A&M, Corpus Christi. You take those teams to the tournament. First year at Western Kentucky, you do what hasn't been done in a long time here. You know, just kind of talk about how special this has been for you over the year and how that's been for you. Yeah, I mean, um, I told these guys, you know, I, obviously I've been absolutely blessed to have been to a bunch of tournaments at Creighton and Purdue and Corpus Christi and, and now here. But um, this one's different, obviously. Um, you know, and I, I told these guys this the other day because I asked them all, like, what's the coolest thing that's happened since we made the NCAA tournament? And, and like, what, you know, what's something that you'll, you'll never forget? And for me, um, being here this year without my family was really, really hard. And, uh, you know, these, were, these guys were all I had between them and, and the staff. I mean, that's all I had. I didn't, you know, there was, there were some people within town that, that tried to take care of me and have me over for dinner or go to, you know, whatever. But there's a lot of lonely days and, uh, you know, these guys poured their heart and soul into it. I poured my heart and soul into it. And um, when you do that and you get rewarded for it, there's no better feeling in the world. And uh, that's why I keep telling them, that, again, there's no losers today. We just lost the basketball game. These guys are winners, and uh, they're going to be great husbands and fathers and, and productive members in the community as they grow older. Thank you, Coach. Yep. Thank you. Oh, we grabbed them. No, you're down there for four.